Hi, I'm Cab. Wait, sorry, I meant I'm back. And、uh, I have not uploaded about this game in a while. But no, no, trust me, I have a good excuse. So, like, I was gonna work on the game, so I sat at my desk and decided to get productive. And by that, I mean watch Twitch streamer Felipe Ratu for five hours and then pass out at 3 a.m. Then I decided to fix some of the existing bugs in the game.、Uh, but then I watched Twitch streamer and YouTuber Mr. Elliptic for five hours and then passed out at 3 a.m. Now a major refactor of the attack system was pending, so I started by,、um, well, doing the only logical thing, which was watching Twitch streamer kiss the kitten for five hours and then passing out at 3 a.m. <sighs> by now, where two months passed and my channel was looking pretty dead, so I whipped out two videos real quick and then finally got to work. I started by actually fully texturing the map and implementing the first area of the game, the Gerudo region. A couple of people from the last episode really liked the cloud shader, so I extended that idea into a full weather system. It works by having an environment manager that has a bunch of signals, which are just basically event handlers. In effect, a bunch of VFX are toggled or triggered, and the sky shader material is modified to have the correct colors. The problem was this gave me a solid week of brain damage, so I had to move on to a shader you don't understand, man. I can't live without them. So I revamped the remote bomb VFX, you know, because I can. Something incredibly important was missing from Link's weapon arsenal, though. The bow and arrow. Now let me tell you, I looked at unholy amounts of Stack Overflow code in tutorials, but I just couldn't get the damn trajectory physics to work. So I took the next logical step, which was to watch Vulcan Storm on Twitch for five hours and then pass out at 3 a.m. No, but for real, he sat with me on a whole stream doing the math behind the trajectory problem, and even dug through a five-year-old Unity project to send me a code sample that I translated into GD Script, and finally, it worked. Smash in the Breath of the Wild style explosion from my tutorial with a few modifications, of course, and we've got some hella dope explosive arrows. Now, around New Year's, I showed off an ancient arrow recreation that I did on my community tab, and now seemed like probably a good time to finally integrate that into the game. This world looks empty as hell, dog. So I made a few trees using Treeit, which is a brilliant procedural tree creating software that is 100% free, by the way. I highly recommend it. You should know the drill by now. Write another shader and slap on a bit of 3D noise to make that sweet wind effect. Hmm, what's this? Ultra fast pause on disk sampling algorithm written entirely in GeoScript. <laughs> Our pause on disk sampling algorithm. Finally, I refactored the grass shader and made it actually align to the height map as well as align to the terrain normals. Casper Franson, who goes by the name Arnclit in some places, actually gave me an insanely cool resource on vegetation physics, which he showed off on the Godot shaders and VFX server. I used that to recreate a render texture-based grass physics system, so you can now cut and burn the grass. I also moved the grass interaction to a sort of flow map using the same render texture method, but it's still kind of jank. It's fine though. That's a future Nikoto problem. So you know, fuck that guy. Now I was pretty confident in what I created, so I thought I'd contact Nagi, the original creator of this project. So, hey, so remember that Breath of the Wild clone you made some time ago? Yeah. Yeah. So I took the project and added an overworld to the game with this grass physics system. Put your shrine in the overworld with the shrine model and bows and arrows and stuff and a bunch of other stuff. Would you like to check it out? Um, nah, nah, I'm good. Hmm. Dude. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. What? How? It's so good. How did you do that? Well, it involved a little bit of shaders, crack, and staying up till three a.m. Yep, sounds about right. Nagi has been the most influential person throughout this project. He's just been a massive pillar of support throughout me working on this project and keeping up with my university work. In fact, astute viewers of this channel may have noticed that the editing on this video is unusually high quality compared to my trash editing, and that's because Nagi is actually the one who edited this entire video. Right now, there's some great Godot dialogue add-ons. Dialogic by Emilio is probably the most popular. While Nathan Hodes add-on has been picking up pace recently and uses a writing-based approach to dialogue, but I'm more of a whoop whoop person, you know. 
Nagi's dialog add-on uses a node-based approach and supports branching dialog through conditionals, which uses variables. Definitely go check out his video and channel if you're interested. I mean, none of this project would even exist without him, so show the man some love. And thanks for watching. Like if you liked it and subscribe if you liked me. Dame, 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 dame.